Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are at another podcast for flipping houses for rookies. For rookies. I'm Dealmaker Bill. And I'm Pete the Rookie. Pete the Rookie. That's all you have to say this morning? I'm not arguing anymore, Bill. Why? What happened? Just waiting for my diploma. <laughs> so you want a plaque on the wall, huh? I even give my students stickers at least for uh, for uh, for uh, you know for accomplishments. Oh, stickers, something. So I have to go. I have to go to the Walmart and I have to get me some of them little star stickers. Or uh, I like a little gold houses. Oh, gold houses! You did a good job, Pete. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Can you hear this? <laughs> Got a pat on the back. Yeah, huh? couldn't reach the back, but you get the idea. <laughs> so how are you today? I'm fine. Yeah? Yeah. Just fine? Yeah, fine yeah. is good enough to start the day, oh. you know. Okay. It's how you turn out the end of the day that matters. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is just the beginning. Yeah? This is like, okay, what's going to happen today? Oh. You know, you haven't done anything yet. Right. So how are you? I don't know yet. I'll let you know later. Okay. And how are you today? I'm just okay today. I, I, I have a few things going on with some contractors and houses and stuff. Mostly I'm concerned because we had a snowstorm just recently. And uh, I'm trying to – I have a house getting staged in a couple days. And I'm having trouble finding somebody to go shovel the damn sidewalk. So I'm going to have to go down to the house and shovel the sidewalk. No, no, no. It's 18 inches. 18 inches, yeah. No, no, snow. No, no. Yeah. It's damn ugly. And it was ice in the middle of it. And no. it's like, you know, you've been shoveling it. No, I lucked out this time. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, I live in uh, one house where I take care of my mom, and so we have a service that does that. My son moved into my house. I couldn't even get there, so he snowblowed everything and, oh. uh, and shoveled everything. I escaped. Yeah? <laughs> yep. Nice having kids, huh? <laughs> when they live in your house, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good boy. He Got is? the snowblower going this time. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Cool. So today's episode is number four. 43, Peter. We're getting there. Yeah, yeah. We're getting there. We're almost halfway to the 100 mark. Okay, 50 definitely has got to be some kind of dinner celebration. Come on. Or dinner concert. celebration? Con okay. Maybe a concert. Concert. Okay. Yeah, something. Actually, I was thinking about that this morning. Music. I need music in my life. You need a little more music, huh? I need a little more music. Yeah. Not less houses, but more music with more houses. <laughs> <laughs> Not coming back on the houses, but a little more music in there. All right, so episode number 43, we're calling it Pre-Screening Seller Lessons. Yeah, pre-screen those sellers. Yeah, and these are lessons that you need to know about pre-screening. Mm. So let's talk about pre-screening. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So why don't you take it away? Well, pre-screening, anything you're doing, any endeavor when you're selling, you have to have some idea if the person is really somebody you want to be talking to. Are they really motivated? Do they really want your product? You've got to have some questions, some way of talking to them, asking them things to make sure you should sit down and waste some time with them or spend some time with them. Waste some time with them. <laughs> yeah, because that's what happens if you don't pre-screen them. You'll be wasting time. Because even when you do pre-screen them, you do waste time right. with people when you don't get the sale. Right. But you hopefully at least learn something. Right. You know, you don't just like snap your fingers and people just throw money at you. You got to work. Right. But let's let's take a lot of the waste out of it in the uh, the heartburn. Right. So um, I kind of get have, it right. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm still trying to mull it over. So I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to put this in perspective here. So I have this philosophy in my mind that I've used for several businesses. That's kind of a little bit off beats, but I'd like to just kind of blurt it out and, and see if I can tie it in with what we're talking about today. Okay, I'm game. So. You know that I have a marketing company, and I've done a lot with marketing. And, and although I've done a lot of amazing things with marketing, I don't think I'm that good with marketing. Uh, but I do have some basic laws, which we talk about often, right? Uh, but one thing that I have figured out after working with a lot of clients is this. If you have a good public relations department, and public relations is nothing more than good works well known, right? And... Um, Basically, what happens is is you have good things happening in your business, and you want people to talk about it. Mm -hmm. 
So the so the purpose of PR or public relations, in my mind, is to get out there and get connected with people. And what I have found is, if you do that now, like the easiest way to explain that is 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 uh, like in a lecture atmosphere, right? So if you have a lecture and you got thirty people there, right, and they're all new people, they don't know who you are, they just came for their first time. Yeah. My opinion of a speaker, what you should do is you should build affinity. Your job is is to build affinity. And the way you do that is 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 to connect with people. And what you'll hear a lot is is that, you know, I was thinking about that, or I like what you're saying. Mm. That's what you'll hear. I like what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That's a good concept. I believe that. Mm. Right? That's when you know you have affinity. Yeah, so when it, you ha- Go ahead. Yeah, because if they, they like what you're saying, they're going to like you. Right. If they don't like you, it's not going to work out so hot. Right. So they feel like there's some sort of a connection there. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's some sort of a, a yeah, connection. Oh, and there's going to be some trust in that, too. If you like somebody, you tend right. to trust them. If you don't like them, you know, you're you not sure you can trust them. So you, you need trust in this business. Right. So uh, so that's one way. Now, in today's generation, there's a lot of ways to do that, you know, with social media and online stuff and podcasts and, you know, stuff like that. Okay? So uh, that's the first step. So you go out. Now, the job of public relations is when it's out doing this, getting these people that like you. What you need to do is you need to get some sort of a identity. Usually it's an email or, you know, a name and an address and a phone number so you can communicate to these people later on. Oh, yeah. When you're uh, like on Facebook, you, you want to, oh, look, I want like to get, I want to find out more about that. Give me your email. Damn it. Right. One more email to get, to get stuff from. So you have to pick, but you, you pick that uh, Kind of sparingly nowadays, too. You don't just throw your email at everybody. Right. You'll, you'll never get through your email. So you really have to convince them that's right. enough to do that. That's right. Even that. But that's how you can communicate back. If you don't get that, how do you t- say, you know. In right. the old days, you can have your phone number, please. Right. Well, realize that communication is always a two-way thing. I mean, if I stood in front of you and I just obsessively communicated and, never, and I was two feet in front of you and I never let you communicate back to me, what would happen? I'd walk away. Or you'd stop if you couldn't walk away, like in the army or in the Marines. <laughs> yeah, you'd turn it off somehow. You turn it off mentally. Yep. You stop hearing, right? Yep. Or a husband and wife. You know, yep. I do. I, I know I'm I'm accused of that. I'll yes, turn my dear. wife off. Yeah. Yes, dear. Exactly. Yes, or, dear. Or kids with you know kids and parents. You know, so you mentally tune them out. Yep. Okay. So, two way is communication engagement, right? So it's like it's like you're in both parties are engaged. Like you and I are engaged right now. Yep. Okay, and we're talking about the same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you have any kind of public relations or any kind of marketing that doesn't have a way for your 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 recipient to engage, mm. it's not going to work that well. They have to respond some way, be able to contact you back, right. ask questions, make a comment, something, whatever, something, some way to communicate back. Mm-hmm. So if you're doing public relations and and you're doing it without a way for them to to, to communicate back to you, and it could just be like a call to action, mm-hmm. like buy this now. Mm-hmm. That's a communication. Mm-hmm. Okay? So when I'm doing lectures, and we don't do it as much as we used to, but when I'm doing lectures, a lot of times I'll give away things and say, text me, uh, you know, text free blah, blah, blah to this phone number, and I'll get, grab their identity. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's one way to do it. <clears throat> Lately, what we do is we just send people like the podcast, for example. Go to flippinghouses.club. Mm-hmm. And just send them there, and then they can communicate with us. They can they can get our free course. You know the the ten the ten ways to buy properties. They can get that. You know, so there is a way for the people like the people listening right now. They can communicate back to us. Right. But this is a perfect example. So they listen to the podcast and they like what you and I have to say, and we know that because I get emails like that every single day. Or, or every single week, minimally. I mean, I mm-hmm. get, I've, I've got dozens and dozens of them. Would you believe that we actually have people on this podcast that listen to this podcast and only listen to this podcast and are buying houses? You're serious. I'm dead. I'll They're show buying you the houses just, them to you. just from the podcast? I got an email. I've Holy got, I've cow. I've gotten a couple people just from living, listening to the podcast have actually purchased houses. That's amazing because I know how much you need to know or think you need to know to feel right. confident to give it a shot 
Good right. for them. They got some deals. Good for them. Okay. Now, uh, that's an exception to the rule because, like you yeah. said, there, there's a little bit. But there are. I mean, we. I'm give, not that brave. Yeah, we, we <laughs> give enough content that we could. You could actually do that. Yeah. My point is, is that there was affinity there. So mm. we're we're building affinity. So if there's enough affinity, then sooner or later you're going to go to our website, flippinghouses.club, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and then you're going to get more information and get more involved. Okay. So that's a way to catch identities. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's the first step. The second step is marketing. Right. Okay. So now that you have the identity, you have affinity. Now what you need to do is you need to build some agreements. Okay, so what that means is is that you and I are going to talk by email, or you're going to watch my video, or and we're gonna and you're gonna and we're gonna build a little bit more of agreement. Okay, right? We're gonna get a little bit closer to some, having the same reality, like the information they get and they agree to it, and it makes sense, and they get a little bit more like this is making sense. Right? I like it. Yeah, it makes sense. It's I evidence. Agree. It's evidence that we're on the same page. Yeah. So basically what's happening is is me as the speaker is getting in the conversation you're already having in your head. Mm-hmm. And the person that's that, that I'm getting into that conversation agrees that I should be in that conversation. And, yeah. that, and that what we're doing is real and it's possible. Now, you and I know it's real because we do it every day. Yep. We do it in Wallingford, Connecticut. Yep. We do it all the time. And I have coaching clients that are like buying houses. So you and I know it's real. But what about the guy that's in uh, in Alaska listening to us right now or, you know, Australia? Australia. Or, or T- Tennessee. Or, yeah, Tennessee. What was his name? Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Jim. No. I don't know. I forget. <laughs> wow. Sorry about that. Uh, anyways, uh, Pennsylvania. I mean, I've got, you know, California. I've got, I've got emails from all over. The Caribbean? No, none from the Caribbean yet. I'll, I'll, I'll bring, I'm going to bring the show to the Caribbean in June, though. <laughs> We're going to work out a little strategy. Oh, yeah? We're going to do a show from the Caribbean. All right. You know? All right. I need to get a flight deducted from my uh, bills. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, so now that we've built some sort of affinity, right, and, we, and we've gotten our, our good works well known, mm-hmm. we gather an identity. And at that point, once we gather the identity, okay, now we send some marketing to them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now what happens is now you start building some agreements like this is how we do things. This is how it works. And this is how you could participate. Right. If you want to do that. Mm -hmm. Then what happens after you do the marketing is you do the sales portion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now take a doctor's situation like a chiropractor. Yeah. Okay. If he's not doing the public relations and he's not doing the marketing What's his sales cycle going to be like? Well, I would imagine somebody would get hurt and think, gee, who can help me with this? And they start scratching their heads, and somebody goes, why don't you go see a chiropractor? Uh, I guess so. And they start hunting around, and they just kind of guess who they want to go see. Right. That's correct. But, you know, because there's, there's been some marketing by somebody once upon a time because people are aware of it in general. Okay, but let's just talk about the sales cycle. Not yeah. getting there, just the sales cycle. Hmm. Now the person sits down in front of the chiropractor, and what's oh, he yeah, got he, to do? He winds up there. Now he doesn't know. He's uh, got to indoctrinate yeah. the person on how things work and what his philosophies yeah. are in yeah. the sales cycle. I've been in those positions. And instead of taking a 10-minute, doing a 10-minute session, it's now a half-an-hour session. Yep. How chiropractic works, and this is why. And it was de- developed right. by this guy here, and... Right. Here's the results you could get. And he does that 50 times a day or 100 times a day. That's why sometimes have videos out front. Right. (laughs) Okay. A little video run. Watch this video. So that's a classic example of what it's like if you don't indoctrinate your people. Yeah. So in the PR, you do some indoctrination. Right. In the marketing, you reinforce the theory. So in other words, let's talk about my flipping house business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go to flippinghouses.club and there's 10 videos there, right? Those 10 videos are two and a half hours with the lecture <clears throat> where I actually do deal structuring. Right. And I do it on the board. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> After, and this has just recently started, so if this hasn't happened to you, it will be happening to you if somebody's done this already. 
after you get involved with that, I start sending you emails and start showing you some videos of deals that I've done and different different things that happen. And I build agreement that, that what I taught you in those first videos is completely real because I'm going to give you evidence now. Right, because some of the stuff you say, people don't just don't believe it. And the first couple of times, like, that can't be. How did you do that? It's just I'm going to build my story, way. and I'm going to show you the evidence yep. that it can be done. Okay. Now, when it comes time for you to buy something from me, like a course or coaching or whatever it may be, maybe it's as simple as a thirty-seven dollar thing. Yep. Okay. Now, once you come to, it's time for you to buy something. How hard is it going to be for you to make that decision? Not hard because you've already gotten far enough in. It's like when you meet people. Right. You know, you meet them a few times. You talk to them. You have a lot of common ground and then you do something with them you just hang out or do a business or just do something but right. you know you don't get a stranger off the street hey you want to go to a movie that's right so you you, you just like with a person but this is in a business atmosphere but it's the same thing so you basically basically what you're saying then Pete, is is that we had to have affinity mm -hmm. then we had to have some agreements mm -hmm. then we were able to communicate yeah, then we're willing to talk more and be not wonder about it or worry about it or be unsure about it. Just feel comfortable about moving ahead and keep it going. Most businesses do it backwards. They'll get cold, they'll get leads, and they'll want to communicate, try to build reality, and try to build affinity. Not on a cold call? On a cold call. Oh, I hate those. Okay. So it can be done, but if you're doing it the way I'm talking about, it's a lot easier. And I've done that way, too. I mean, I actually have this with my music lesson business. I have a website, and I have a website referral services. And nowadays, instead of picking up the phone and giving a spiel, I'll get you have a student coming such and such because there's data out there they can look at. Right. Uh, they can see reviews. They can see that. It's just that's it's kind of wild to me, but it happens all the time. But it, all that, I, I didn't think of it from that perspective, but it's, it happens. So by the time they get to me, they don't have any questions. Yeah, I saw the website. I know where you live. I know how much it is. Okay, what do you want from me then? The lesson. Right. So it works everywhere. Right. So you found a way to do it in real estate. Right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So now that yeah. we're all on the same page yep. and we're talking. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the sales cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the PR, which is lectures, their videos, their online videos, their social media, their podcasts, their, you know, write a book, uh, do a radio show, you know, whatever it may be. It's a place where the, where you can get to a lot of people quickly mm -hmm. with, with one device, like a book or like a podcast or like, yeah. you know, wherever. You can get a lot of people and you can filter through. Mm -hmm. You get their identities. Now you start talking to them and start building some agreements with them, mm -hmm. right? You start getting things so you, so you guys agree that these are the real things. Then you can start communicating to them, okay? Now, obviously, the marketing is communicating, but I'm talking about real communication, Yeah, two-way communication. Yeah, you get past the first initial steps, and you're really getting down to the nitty-gritty. The communication is the sales cycle, okay? Right, right, right. So let's talk about that for uh, probably five minutes, and then we're going to come back to the point of the show. So there's five steps to communication. I mean, five steps to a sale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what was the name of the guy that wrote that book? Do you remember his name? Which book? Uh, Fish. Uh, oh, my goodness. What was the book the about? Five, the five steps to a sale. Uh, didn't Ron LeGrand have it? No. Kiyosaki? No. Hmm. Uh Anyways, it'll come to my head. Anyways, okay. so uh, five steps to a sale. A, you contact the person. That's a good start. Okay. When I mean contact, I'm just what I'm talking about, you're in communication. Mm -hmm. It's not like I left a voicemail. That's mm. not contact. Contact to me is two-way communication. I say something, you answer me. You say something. I answer you. We're engaged. Got it. That's contact. You're willing to talk to me. Mm -hmm. In other words, the affinity and the agreements are kind of set up already, and we're ready to communicate. Right. Okay? You're both the, interested in each other. Right. Yeah, there's some affinity there yeah. and some agreements mm -hmm. that, that you have in common. Yep. Right? Then the next step is, what's the next step? Do you remember? 
After the contact? Yeah. Um, pre, are we pre, we're pre screening, pre-screening or pre qualifying? Yeah. Okay. Those are pretty interchangeable. Uh, yeah, to, to a degree. Pre screening to me uh, is more automated and pre qualifying is more personal. Okay. In my head. Doesn't mean that that's correct, but that's uh-huh. how I have it. Yeah. So pre qualifying is obviously is this person able to attain my product? Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes it's money. I more think it's mentally than money. Hmm. Because if somebody wants something bad enough, they always find the money. Interesting. So money's never the barrier. Okay? I've had people buy things that I didn't think would ever buy anything, and they pull money like from like the most mm-hmm. wildest places. Mm-hmm. Well, when you really want something. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so you have to pre-qualify the guy mentally. Like, for example, we just have some people come to our meetup, and we show them how we buy and sell houses, and they just don't do anything because they think that it can't be done. They don't agree with it. You know, they're like, subject to who would give a deed and keep the loan in their name. <laughs> and they have a mental barrier in their own head. So how are they going to sell that? Well, that's well. they're thinking what they were, would, would or wouldn't do, and you can't judge the world by you. Right. Well, you can, but it's a small world. (laughs) Yeah, it's really small. There's more of them than you. So listen, more than. So my point is, is that how how are they mentally able to accept what you're going to do? Are they willing to listen? Are they are they one of those people that are just like uh, what do they call them? Uh, Open minded. Yeah. Open minded people are trouble. You know, they can't make it. Yeah, they're open-minded because they just take in so much information, they can't make a decision. Yeah, that's that's going overboard. Yeah, okay. So uh, so no, step number one is is you contact someone, which means uh, two-way communication, and you're actually engaged. Right. Number two is pre-qualifying. They're mentally able, and they're willing to listen to what you have to offer them, and they're, and they're there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number three. You're looking at me. <laughs> no, I, I remember. Oh, okay. Is give your presentation. Right, right. Okay. So when you give your presentation, which you, whatever whatever pitch it may be or whatever, and I say pitch in a bad word, but uh, whatever whatever enlightenment cycle or whatever consultative sale you're going to do, okay, you're going to want to slant your presentation towards any objections, stalls, or resistance you might have heard in the past. Hmm. Like I need to think about it. If you hear I need to think about it a lot, which mm. is which is a stall, okay, then then put that in your presentation. You know, I get a lot, and you go something like this. I get a lot of people that tell me they think about it, but let, let's cover this, so you don't have to do that today. Mm. You know, and that's a way you can put it in your presentation. So you do a really good presentation, right? Right. right. Once you do, see that's the reason why you want to make sure they're pre pre qualified. And you want to make sure they're in communication with you because what are you going to do? You're well, going to give them a presentation. Yeah, and they have to be engaged with you. Right. And you have to be on the same page with them. Right. And when you're done, you want them to make a decision. This is the exact reason why you want to have affinity mm. and why you want to have your marketing build agreement because by the time you get to your presentation, you want to be engaged. You want them to be listening you want them to be like cognizant of this could really work. Mm. This could solve my problem. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Step number four: you close. And a close simply means that you go from talking about the product to how do I get it? Yeah. He starts asking. So he questions, right? He's mentally made a decision. How much does it cost, and how long would it take to get it? Or right. how he's mentally you do made it? a decision. He wants it. He's gone into how do I get it? Right. Which is the question you just said? Yeah, some details, and you know, right. you what colors do you have? <laughs> right. So when you're doing your presentation, when you start hearing things like, uh, "How'd you say this works? Mm. When did I need to move by? Mm. How does the paperwork work? Do I need to see a lawyer?" Mm-hmm. You know, start asking questions like that. He's in the close. Yeah. So don't don't go past your presentation. If he's in a close or she's in a close, then close him. Right. Okay. Yeah. Stop when you're done. Right. Yeah. Just just get it get it finished. Yep. And then the last step is is to deliver what you promised. 
And in this particular case, that's huge for us because what happens is uh, there's a lot of paperwork. You know, not a lot of paper. I shouldn't say that. There's paperwork that needs to be done, and then they got to move out, and then you got to, you know. So the transition between them leaving the house and you getting the house could be a little bit of a runway. Yep. So you need to make sure you keep that consistency of affinity and of the agreements and stay in communication with them the entire time and just not drop them because you got signed documents. Mm. So you need to keep that consistency of help and that consistency of, of uh, what's the word I want, uh, affinity, I guess, in the deal. Well, so they feel yeah. like you're there for them. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of trust going on then, too. Right. I mean, it's really building and building and building. And I, right. I love when we work with people and <clears throat> you say you're going to do something, you do it. And they go, oh, you did? Of course I did. Right. And you ask them to do something and, and they do. And you go, thanks for doing it. And then you do something and then, hey, we're actually getting it done. Because <laughs> as opposed to somebody saying they're going to do something and not doing it. Nobody likes that one. So we make sure that when we say we're going to do something, we do it. We don't change our minds. We don't have something else come up that day. <laughs> Just what we were talking about before the show. Yeah, no, seriously, folks. Bill, rest for a second. When you tell somebody you're going to do something, I don't care what it is, do not change your mind. Do not come up with something else instead. Have some respect for the other person on the other side. You're not the only one in the world. It's not about you. It's about you and the other guy and the other person and the other people. Well, I don't know if I wouldn't say don't change your mind. It's okay to do that, but change your mind for the better, not for the worse. Yeah, because as an executive, I'll tell you right now, what's the worst thing in the world for me when an employee comes to me? Noncompliance and problems. Yeah. They bring me a problem, no, so, no solution. Yep. Right? Now, their solution may be totally wrong, but they bring me a problem that stops the flow. Yeah. It stops the entire flow of whatever we're doing. Yep. And then it takes my attention off of whatever I need to be doing because really what are we supposed to be doing? What are the three things that we should be doing as, as real estate entrepreneurs? We should be marketing for deals, yeah. marketing for dollars for the private money when needed, yeah. and marketing for buyers and renter or leaser peoples. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and whenever you get pulled from that, your business is going to heat up in five or six weeks from now. Ooh, boy. It's just, it's, it's a cyclic or cyclic. What's the word? Cyclic? A uh, cyclic would work. C- cyclic? <clears throat> right? Yeah. It's, it's got a cycle. Uh-huh. Right? Well, you have, you have the... The business constructed as a system of steps. Right. And it, I got busy in a renovation of a house just overseeing a lot, and parts of it started slowing down, uh, and then you lose. So right. you have to have people do work for you, have contracts work, or contracts work for you, and not get so pulled into the problems that you drop what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Because that's, you know... If you don't have a big team, you can get spattered around here and there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm just saying that if you make a commitment to somebody, don't throw it off that lightly. It'll just come something else comes up. I changed my mind. Right. Going to late compounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think that hasn't happened to me? Yeah. But sorry, you have to pay anyways. All right. So we got the whole, we have the whole, the layout here, right? It's taken me a half an hour to explain it. But you want to have public relations. Yeah. You want to have some agreement. Mm-hmm. And then you want to be able to communicate. Yeah. Now let's put this into 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 my system. Now we're talking about the flipping houses website because that was easy to talk about. So how do we do this? And in- talk about being transparent. <laughs> what you just told people how everything works. Yeah, because that's how it works. It's how it works. It's the truth. So yeah. so how do we do this in a real estate business? Okay, so. The first thing you want to do is you want to get some device, and I use a lot of direct mail, or you can use a bandit sign or whatever. You want to get some attention building device that says what? We buy houses. We buy houses, right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to find a way to communicate to motivated sellers. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, that's the affinity factor because what what builds affinity quicker than a message that mar- that matches your market? Oh yeah, if somebody's looking, gee, I got to sell my house, and there's somebody who sells houses, like okay, maybe I talk to this guy. That builds affinity. They feel, they figure we well, got something in common. Right. 
So there's no better way to build affinity than to have a good message to market match. Mm-hmm. Now you, you, you get their attention like, I buy houses. And they're like, oh, I need to sell a house. What's this about? Mm. How does it work? What is this? Right. So what they do is they actually call up a free recorded message. And my message is almost six minutes long. And it's me talking to them about what I can do to help them. Mm. Does that build affinity? Yeah, because somewhere in there, if you just give the whole spiel, you'll hit two, three, four, five points that register with them. That's right. You go, yeah, that's me. That's me. This that's guy, hey, honey, what? This, there's a guy on the phone here. I think he can help us. Right. <laughs> that's no different than standing up in front of a room full of people and giving a small lecture or giving a video on YouTube explaining what we do. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Just a free recorded message will do that. You'll build affinity. Okay? By the way... When they called our phone number, what did we do electronically? We capture their phone number with a caller ID. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we have some information. Even if it's they hung up. Right. <laughs> okay. You still but we back. know that. Yeah. But we know that. We know how long they lasted on our free recorded message. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. When they're on the free recorded message, it tells <laughs> them to dial, <coughs> in my case, it <coughs> Excuse me. It tells them to dial six if you want to speak to a live person. Yep. That's good because once they've heard enough, like, hey, this guy may be able to help us, they're done. They don't want to listen anymore. Hit six, talk to somebody so they can dive out. Exactly. Then they go over to my operator. Operator picks up the phone and says, hello. Okay. Hello, this is Bill. (laughs) No, they don't say it's Bill. (laughs) And they, the operator proceeds to ask them six or eight questions, mm-hmm. which are questions that I need to know to figure out whether or not they have any motivation. Are they a prospect or a suspect? Right. Okay. And there's some pre-screening there, huh? Right. So right away, there's our public relations. Okay? Yeah. Now we get their name and their phone number, and we're going to call them back, and we're going to do the prospect suspect form. And we're going to build some agreement with them, like how big is their house, how many bedrooms. They're going to tell us all these things about how much their mortgage is, how much are they asking. And we're going to figure out a little bit deeper if they're a prospect or a suspect. Right. And all we're doing here is, is we've already built some affinity. Now we're building some agreement between us and the seller. Well, this is the opportunity for them to give us their side of the story. Right. Finally, they get to like, blah, 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 and I got this, and I got a new furnace in, and you see the roof, it's really nice, and the backyard, blah, blah, blah. Sure, they start uh, giving you their side of the story. Exactly. So now that we have affinity, and now that we have some agreement, what are we ready to do? Go give our offer. Mm -hmm. It's a presentation. With the five points of a sale. Mm Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why it works. Mm. That's why it works so well. Because it's a system. Right. And you're not talking to somebody you shouldn't be. And if you are, you'll know pretty quick and you get out. Right. So let's take a few quotes from Mr. Legrand's book, which is Real Estate Entrepreneur in Any Economy by Ron Legrand. How, mm-hmm. to, be a, how to be a quick turn real estate Entrepreneur in any economy. Mm -hmm. A step-by-step guide to your first deal. Yep. So he says in his book, a couple different quotes we're going to take from Mr. Legrand. I don't want to take credit for them. He says this. Never buy a property unless you can get free equity the day you buy it or know how to create free equity shortly thereafter. Wow. You stopped talking. I want that to sink in. Never buy a property unless you get free equity the day you buy it or know how to create free equity shortly thereafter. 
And if you look at Bill's seven ways to buy a house, you will see the numbers of equity and the way to do the offer, and there's where the equity is right there. Right. Right? That's so I, it just it took me 30 seconds, but it totally connected yep. that those 10 videos yep. that show the seven offers, they're all based on how much equity does the house have, yep. how could you possibly buy the house, because you can, uh, people cannot always go to a realtor to sell a house. Right. If he's got to move in two weeks, you can't wait six months with a realtor. If there's not enough equity to pay all the expenses of getting a realtor and the lawyer and the closing and blah, 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 he can't do it. So the numbers are important as far as the equity in terms of what could we do to buy this house? Oh, this guy owns a house free and clear. Well, what could we do with that? How could we structure that? It's based on that. Mm-hmm. But you'll know what your equity is. This is what they call make your money when you're buying, not when you're selling. selling. That's right. Collect yeah, it when you're selling. Yeah. You can't buy. See, <laughs> I have a down pat. I buy uh, guitar picks for $0.28 cents and sell them to my students for 25 Right. And you say, this guy must be crazy, but I do volume business. Right. What does that mean? You lose $0.03 cents a pick? Yeah. But it's funny when I say that. I really have digressed, but it's funny when I say that to people. This is a joke part of the show because half the people nod and say, oh, yeah, that's nice. And don't understand, the more I sell, the more I lose. And other guys go, yeah, but you're losing three cents every time. And I say, yeah, but I don't care. Just take the pick. I give them away. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But and people are funny. They don't get it. But, yeah, you have to know at the front end what's going to happen with the, uh, the deal. Right. So your seven offers gives you control of what's happening so you can make that quote work. Right. Wow. I like it. So here's the deal. When someone says to me, I want to sell my house. Nobody has ever once asked me what that means to me. Because that's not what I heard. And I've never told anybody this. Oh, okay. I'm listening. When someone says, I want to sell my house. Yeah. Here's here's what it sounds like on Planet (laughs) Bill. What Bill hears is... I have equity that I'd like to free up. Can you help me with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or my equity stock, and I'd like to use it because mm-hmm. I have another problem mm-hmm. that needs it. Mm-hmm. Can you help me with that? Huh. I have frozen equity, and I think you can help me get it quickly. Hmm. And when you think about it that way, and when you understand that that's real estate 101, the seven ways that I buy houses becomes very enlightening because all you're now doing is negotiating that equity. Mm. And basically what it comes down to is I've devised seven ways that you pretty much can say to the person when they say to you, I want to sell my house, and Planet Bills is I have equity and I'd like to, I'd like to get it out. Mm. I say to you, okay, well, if you do it this way, I'll give you all the equity. Mm. Or if you do it, and, and but you're going to get less equity because I need to get some. Yeah. Or <clears throat> I'll give you more of your equity if you give me some time and I can make some cash flow in between. Mm-hmm. So what I say to you in the beginning in kind of uh, very unique ways is – How long are you willing to wait for your equity? Mm. And based on how long they're willing to wait for their equity is how, which deal I use. Yeah. If they need it right away, then it's a number five deal. It's a rehab retail deal, which Mm -hmm. is a cash deal. That's using the Mayo formula. Yep. Maximum allowable offer. Your house is worth 70 grand. You multiply it by 70% minus the repairs, and there's your number, which, by the way, that number is usually 50% all the time. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you want your equity quick, that's how I'll do it. Right. But anytime you get anything quick, you get less. Right. The longer you wait, the more you get. The more you get. I mean, if you're not sure of this, go plant a seed. If you're not, yeah. Or or, or get a credit card. Yeah. You know, you could pay $1,000 cash today or you could put it in your credit card and pay it over two years and pay, you know, 1300 Yeah. Or put it in your card and pay it this month or pay it right. in two months. But the longer you drag it out, you know what's happening. Right. Damn interest rates. 
So but, but it's you're, advantageous you're, for us to figure out what their equity is first because that's what we want to negotiate is the equity. We don't want to negotiate their mortgage. That's already There's nothing we can do about that unless we short sale it. It took me months to really get this. I want to punch it up for the listeners if, if they haven't listened to this enough times because people tell you how much they want for the house. I want 200000 they're not getting two hundred thousand. Yeah, I want two hundred. You're not getting two hundred thousand. You're getting what's left over. Right. And no one ever talks about what the, what's left over. That's all you're ever going to get. Right. You know, uh, it's it's whatever's left. So the number that they ask for, the number that is on the side of the building, two hundred thousand dollars. It's almost irrelevant. What if they owe two hundred thousand dollars? And what the if they less, owe nothing? The less they understand real estate. The higher that number is and the more they're stuck to it. Oh, yeah. Because they need to have a cushion because they have no idea how much they're going to net. And what makes us unique individuals, and when I say that, now I'm, 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 there's a lot in this show. You should go back and listen to this show again because the stuff I'm telling you is like some basic theory that if you understand it, you buy houses. Mm. Okay? So the bottom line is, is that you should not – Call yourself an investor. Because when you call yourself an investor, here's what happens. The other person thinks, oh, yeah, he's going to make money. He's not going to give me as much as I want. Mm-hmm. It's the first thing they're going to think. It's, it's a connotation you don't need. Oh, yeah. But if you call yourself, and, and oh, yeah, by the way, here's the amazing thing is, do you have the money? Is it your money? Well, people ask you if you... If it, no, what? if you call yourself an investor... Oh, oh yeah. Do you have the $200,000 to buy this house? No. Most don't. No. Okay. So is it really true? <clears throat> You're not really investing right. money. But if you call yourself a real estate entrepreneur, what's your job? To get all the resources put together so the deal could be structured and executed. Because you're a real estate entrepreneur. So what you're doing is, is you're taking, you're being an entrepreneur. You're using all your available resources to make your product. And your product in this particular case is a bought house from someone who can't sell and a sold house to someone that can't buy. Yep. That's an entrepreneur. And mm-hmm. you use all your resources to do that. Right. And if you think about it, businessmen do this all the time. Right. You know, they don't buy skyscrapers with cash out of their their account. They figure out who can lend it to them, who can do the work, who can uh, rent the offices, lease things. They put, put things together. They build right. a shopping mall, you know, out of their pocket. No, they put pe- people with money, a bank, whatever, and then they make business. They make opportunities for other people. That's right. So it, this is on the scale of one house at a time or some building. That's right. So if you watch my seven video or my ten videos on FlippingHouses.club, <laughs> every one of those videos is all about how you take your loan to value ratio, in other words, what they owe to what they're asking, which, by the way, let's clear up the word equity because mm-hmm. the word equity, the definition of the word equity means what you owe, the entire what you owe. That could be your mortgage, could be taxes, could be water bills, could whatever you owe mm-hmm. on the property. And you subtract that from what you sold for, not what it's worth, not what the estimate is, it's not what the uh, the, the evaluation, it's not the tax rate, it's not. It's what you're actually going to get at a closing table when you sold. Yep. So if you owe sixty, and you got a hundred at a closing table, you had forty thousand dollars worth of equity that you collected. You might have expected more or less, usually more, but that's what you got. Right. Okay, so that's what the definition of equity is. So what Ron LeGrand is saying is is that the day you buy the property, you get equity that day. That's how we make our money. Mm. If you're not doing that, then don't buy the deal. Which brings us to the next statement Mr. LeGrand says. He says, you ready for this? Yeah. <coughs> What's he saying now, Bill? This is the punchline. Let me see. We're 44 minutes into the show, so let's get and You're already punchline. at the punchline. You're doing good today. Yeah. Sellers who need to sell will make you rich. Who need to sell. Sellers 
who want to sell will make you old and tired and will put you out of business. Want. Need. Now read that again because this is an awesome sentence. Yeah. Sellers who need to sell will make you rich. Sellers who want to sell will make you old and tired and will put you out of business. This is called a suspect. Mm -hmm. People who want to sell or need to sell are prospects. Yeah. Okay. Two little words. Yep. Oh, I really want to sell my house. That's nice. Yep. So that's why we call this pre-screening seller lessons. So is there some ways to find out which a person is? Well, first of all, if you go through the system that we were just talking about, if they actually get your get a piece of mail or see your ad or whatever and they call the phone number, mm-hmm. right, and they listen to the free recorded message, they actually stay on the message and they listen to it, and then they dial six. Then they go to the operator and the operator asks them the six or eight questions. At that point, they have done some pre-screening because they've gone through a couple hoops. They went, they got, they got through the, the first device, whether it's the letter or mail. I mean, it's the mail or sign or mm-hmm. postcard or whatever it is. So they got through that device and they yeah. did the call to action. Yeah. Then they got on the free recorded message and they did that call to action. Yeah, and there's a lot of data there. So if they get through that, they're they're more serious. Then they get on to the with the operator, and they do that call to action. Mm-hmm. So they've gone through three calls of action. Yep. So basically what I was telling you before is with your marketing, the way people can respond is to go through your call to action. Mm. They've gone through three pieces, you know, the mail, yeah, the free recorded message, and the operator. Yep. Where there are six or eight <coughs> questions. So now what they're asking for is for you to communicate to them. What is the only thing a seller wants? An offer. He And most people answer that question, the only thing a seller wants is to sell their house. No. The first thing they want to do is they want to qualify how much you're going to give them because what are they going to need to do? They need to figure out how much equity they're going to be able to take out of the property. Yeah, and they really don't know. It's not that simple of a price. Even a car, anything. Right. You know, anything besides a supermarket, you know, the price is the price. You can't negotiate, but a car, a house, right. bigger ticket items, there's some wiggle room in there. Right. So you have to negotiate to find out what the equities and they're not gonna take the first offer that comes along, oh I'll sell your house. Well maybe I can get more. So they need offers to figure that out. Is that, right. is that what you're saying? That's right. Okay. So they're gonna hunt around and they're gonna shop around for offers. And you thought they wanted money. <laughs> yeah. So so now that they've gone through the the advertisement, they've gone through the free recorded message, they've gone through the, the answering service, now it's time for us to talk to them. But guess what? We don't give them the offer. We don't? We don't. We but, gather more but, information, but. and at the prospect suspect level, what we're doing is we're actually pre-screening whether or not they're motivated. Right. So basically, we're trying to figure out, do they want to sell or do they need to sell? Mm. And there's various questions that will, if you read them all, ask right. them all, read them, you get a good inkling of what's going on. You'll figure that out. Yep. Once you know that there's an inkling that they are motivated, that's the person you want to make an offer to. Now you go out to the property and you have to qualify the property. They told you it was worth 180000 Is it really a $180,000 neighborhood? Mm. So whatever they told you doesn't matter until you go investigate. Yeah. They told you it didn't need repairs, so you need to walk around the house and make sure it needs repairs. They told you it wasn't dysfunctional, it was a nice house, so you go out and check to make sure it's not dysfunctional in a nice house. Right? So you right. have to go qualify the house. Mm-hmm. Once you have <clears throat> the seller qualified because you know that they're motivated and they're willing to listen to your offer, right, because they need to sell, and you've looked at the property and realized that the property is qualified, now you can make the offer. If you do it before then, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Sure. That's at the end of the cycle. That's the last step, or almost the last step. It's the step where you communicate. Mm. You need to build your public relations. 
and your affinity. You need to go through your uh, uh, marketing and build some agreements. So now when you sit down, just like the chiropractor, when you sit down and actually do your presentation, you don't have to start from square one and do the whole thing every single time. You've already built up some realities that they now can operate with, and you and them are on the same page. So now it's not, oh, you're an investor. I know you want to pay little money. Mm. You want to make as much as possible, so we're going to have a little contest here to see who's got better negotiating skills. It's not that way. It's a lot easier of a conversation once they've gone through the public relations, Mm -hmm. they've gone through the marketing, and they've gone into the sales cycle now. And if you do all of them correctly, then you've properly done pre-screening. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I've seen it. Right. And I've seen it the wrong way, too. Right. I messed up something. Uh, The last one I did, I kind of messed up. Right. Missed a step. You learn from that. <clears throat> so one thing that that Ron also says, Ron LeGrand also says, uh, especially when you're buying cash, huh. okay, there must be a big spread between the ARV and the asking price or the deal is dead. Hmm. So ARV is after renovated value, right? So there must be a big spread between the ARV and asking price, otherwise the deal is dead. Now, that's because... Ron is talking about in this book buying ugly houses the interesting thing that we have done is we've 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 figured out how you could never buy a property unless you get free equity the day you buy it or know how to create free equity shortly thereafter like a slot deal okay yeah which is the guy owes a hundred percent right of what the house is worth so where's the equity we create the equity shortly after shortly yeah exactly shortly after yeah the sandwich lease option transaction right and what we do is instead of the house instead of selling the house for a hundred thousand we'll sell it for 110 we created ten thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars or six thousand dollars worth of equity Mm -hmm. and that's what we get to keep Mm -hmm. right you go down the list go to an option there's ten percent worth of equity right you do a lease option, there's 15% worth of equity. Mm-hmm. Right? You do a subject two, there's 20% worth of equity. Right? right? You do a rehab retail, there's 30% worth of equity. Mm-hmm. You do a wholesale, there's 40% worth of equity. And you do uh, owner financing, there's 100% worth of equity. Yep. Which, by the way, every point of equity that we have is negotiation. Uh, when we're going to give them the equity and how we're going to pay it to them. Oh, of course. Everything is, when do I get my money? How much do I get and when do I get it? Right. Okay. And the longer you wait, the more you get. Yeah. That's what the bank does. That's right. And they're one of the biggest businesses in the planet. If you think people won't wait for money, well, some people need the money right now. That's just that. Right. But if they're, they're living comfortably, they have money and they have a house and they have extra money and they don't need it, they would be glad to be wait for more later. Right. Yeah. Right. So does this make sense? Of course. So it's 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 pre-screening sellers before you can make your offer. Yeah. So many people are always ready to make offers. Why? Because the seller is anxious to get an offer. That's all they want. I want an offer. I want mm-hmm. an offer. I want mm-hmm. an offer. So. Let me ask you this question. If you were a doctor and I called you up and I said to you, my knee hurts, right? Mm -hmm. Would you prescribe me with medicine? Can't. Why? Don't know what's going on. First of all, you don't know which knee. (laughs) I don't even know which knee. But does it matter? (laughs) Right. Right handed medicine, left handed medicine. So then if I were to explain to you, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Could you then give me medicine? Maybe. Probably not because it's my interpretation of what's happening and I don't have a doctor's degree. Yeah, that's a big maybe. So what are you going to tell me? Come in so I can inspect you. Why? Because you're the one that went to eight years with the school and understand the body Mm -hmm. and can give me a prescription. Yep. It is no different 
than a doctor with you. You're the professional. You're the one that's training. You're the one that's the uh, real estate entrepreneur. You're the one that has all the education. You need to go out and you need to evaluate the prospect and the property and know what to do. And it's a a process. That's why I call it dealology Hmm. because it's the study of the deal. You need to go through the deal and you need to study every aspect of it. And there's a lot of moving parts. And you're going to have to do that. I was thinking about that today for myself because I'm starting to go in homes myself and make offers. And I cannot think as quickly as you can. And um, in my own head, it, it reminded me of how I improvise in music. I you throw music at me, and I can just start playing. And you do that in a house. The rest of us need time to think. And I think there's a problem with trying to rush ourselves or being worried we don't know what to say. And all I can tell myself is take my time. Be willing to go slow. Ask a lot of questions. Don't try to answer questions too fast. Don't try to make the offer in 10 minutes. Take an hour. Take an hour and a half, whatever you need, or call them back later if you're not sure. It's okay. Because I know for myself I'm ready to embark more, see if I can figure this out. And I have some concern that I don't have it all figured out and I can't see it all quick as quickly as you do by a long shot. Right. So. You want to know what the amazing thing is? Yeah. Is whenever I look at a deal, I never have it figured out either. I know. But you, the, I've watched you do this. You, you take your time because you're not worried right this is important because this is me representing the folks listening who are going to be in my shoes if and worse because i at least have a lot of opportunity to work at this with you not sure how it's going to happen but you're not worried about it because you know you have the options and you can think quickly enough to to shuffle them around in your head where we might be going uh 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 it has to be this or it has to be that but so my advice to myself, so I can go do more of these, so I have a couple of properties to go look at soon, and you might not be available. I might be doing it myself. If you can come, I'm glad to have you always, but I got to start doing more of my own. Take my time. Ask a lot of questions. Don't think you have to know before you get there or right away because you'll, 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 you'll freak yourself out. You'll scare yourself. You'll, you'll put yourself in a, in a freeze. So I just watch you be willing to take the time, ask a lot of questions, and I'll see you make an offer. Says, well, could we do this? How about this? We could do da 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 da. Spend ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and person says, now I don't like that because I have to do this, and that won't work if I do if you do that. Okay, and you think for a minute. Well, what if we do this? But you take your time because you're not worried, right? Because you know the option. So, my advice to me and everyone is just learn as much as you can. Don't be afraid. The worst that happens, you don't get a deal, and you make a, a few steps forward, and you learn a little bit. And next time, you're more ready to do it. But be patient. Think a little bit. Do the best you can. And if you're not sure, this is very important. Tell them, you know what? I'm not sure. Can I get back to you on that? I'll find out. I'll because let you know. you're a real estate entrepreneur. Yeah. You don't need to have the answers. You've got to go find the answers. That's right. And I've learned that from you. And that really, that, I'm just saying that because I'm at the spot. You're telling people, just go do it. And I know... The concerns you get in your head. What if I can't? What if I don't know how? What if, of course, you, you don't know, but that's okay. What do you see in a, a big business? There's a guy at the front of the desk and 10 guys around the desk. Right. Why? Because he doesn't know everything. He's smart enough to hire 10 smart guys. So you can always check with, I check with Bill or you check with a partner. And I, I recommend having somebody to work with, a mentor, us, a partner, your friend. Like, let's do this together. So at least have somebody to bounce ideas off of. Right. You, you definitely got to have somebody to work with. No, you can't, you, do it on your own. you can't talk to yourself. You drive yourself nuts. Exactly. Good, Peter. That's a good uh, good input. No, that's just, I, I, I'm living this right now. And you, you, you say something like that. I can just imagine when people are thinking, oh, well, how am I going to figure this all out? And if I say right. the wrong thing, duh. Well, we have a lot of stuff on our website that helps a lot. No, that, it's that, that, that helps read. a lot. I, I, I'm, I'm reading one book after the other. Uh, I find some, you recommend some, anything. And it all helps. I, I'm sitting in your office today. There's three books piled up on your, on your desk I've never seen. Right. You've got books coming out the ears. Right. We have to realize, and I don't normally talk about this, but you have to realize that I've spent well over fifty thousand dollars for my education. Okay, now what what the what we're trying to create here at at Flipping Houses dot Club is not cheap 
cheap uh, uh, education. Mm -hmm. You need to buy education. You need to spend money to do this business. There is no doubt about it. Absolutely. If you don't think you're going to spend money, don't get involved. Mm -hmm. The uh, thing that I'm trying to create with my online university or on my online courses is spend a little bit, get going. Yeah. Make a little bit of money. Like do a slot deal, make three or four grand, five grand. Mm -hmm. Take that money and reinvest in yourself. And then go do another deal and spend a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And then go do another deal and spend a little bit more. So you earn as you learn, or you learn as you earn, however way you want to put it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm trying to create is instead of charging you twenty five or thirty or fifty thousand dollars like a lot of gurus do, okay, up front, which we could do because my content is just as good as theirs, mm-hmm. if not better. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not being arrogant. I've had a lot of people in those other groups, and I coach them now. Yeah. Because we're better. Yeah. Okay. That's how I called you. Because yep. <laughs> I had that same offer. I'm thinking, why would I do that? Right. Cause as an educator, I don't spend a ton of money outgoing. I mean, I buy one year of college, then another yep. year of college. You know, in stages. Yep. One course, then another course. I mean, that's that's, that's <coughs> natural to me. Right. Because if it works, you'll keep, you'll keep going. If it doesn't work, why bother? Right. And we do have the room filled. Half the people have spent that kind of money, and they're still scratching their heads, no deal. Right. So all I'm trying to do is just coach people along piece by piece, yeah. little at a time. But you are going to have to spend money. Yeah. And I'm not trying to create an environment where you don't. I'm just trying to make it so it's palatable. You can spend a little now, get mm-hmm. something done, spend a little bit more, get something done. And at the end of the day, you'll have a full education and you'll, and you'll have it all paid for, yeah. not on a credit card. Yeah. Okay? All right, Peter. So if anybody wants to find us or make any comments, you can go to info at flippinghouses.club. That's an email. I answer them myself personally. That's info at flippinghouses.club. You can go on to our webpage uh, at flippinghouses.club. And I have a new release today, Peter. What'd you do? If you go to flippinghouses.club forward slash free hyphen training. Wow. Or you can go to flippinghouses.club forward slash free hyphen training. Yeah. Two words with a hyphen in the middle. Yep. I have. Uh, I will give you a beginner's checklist Ooh. on how to start in this business to do what we're talking about. Serious? Seriously. That's awesome. So you go to flippinghouses.club forward slash free hyphen training. And it's a checklist. And it's a beginner's checklist. And it actually shows you what to do to get started. That's awesome um, because when I went to one of those weekend seminars... I came home with a pile of books and my head swimming. Yep. Do I need an LLC? I don't have an attorney. I don't have money for the attorney. And where's my escrow? Honey, do you have an escrow? Right. I don't have any escrows. Where do I get an, an escrow? And a, and a, and a title this company. This lays it out step by oh step. Oh, my God. And I just, I, I didn't freeze, but I just balked. I'll go that far. Um, but when I called you, it's Pete, do this. I literally spent a hundred dollars. I did it, and people started calling me on the phone. I yep. swear to God. Yep. And you were surprised too, because not everybody follows instructions. Right. Um, but be a good little student. Follow instructions. If there's a checklist, there's a checklist. Okay. Flippinghouses dot club, club forward slash, slash free, free hyphen, hyphen training. training. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And you'll be able to get it. That's awesome, Bill. Cool. Thanks. On behalf of all my rookieettes and rookettes out there, we thank you. Perfect. Checklist. Just go sign up and All start right. using it. And you'll start getting questions. All right. Nice. All right, guys. Over and out. Till next week. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to flippinghouses.club for some cutting edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at flippinghouses.club.